Well, as politicians debate building nuclear power plants in Australia, China is going one giant leap further. Chinese authorities announced they are prepared to make one on the moon. Science and technology correspondent Brent O'Halloran joins us live. Brent, this can't be a serious proposal, can it? This is indeed something that China's space agency is keen on. That's according to a senior mm -hmm. official there. This week, China has announced developments in a suite of space-related projects, including naming the next crew to head to its space station. Officials also discussed China's collaboration with Russia and 16 other nations and agencies on an international lunar research station, a permanent base on the moon. Now, Russia had mooted using nuclear to power the base, and Chinese officials have now backed that idea. The chief designer of the lunar program told Reuters that he wants China and Russia to bring a nuclear reactor to the moon and couple it with a solar power network and potentially do this as soon as 2035. Now, I spoke with a former rocket scientist about whether this is a wise thing to do and perhaps a risky thing to do. You've probably noticed the moon is quite far away, so whatever happens on the moon stays on the moon. The issue comes from launching. You know, the one time that we had a nuclear reactor crash was when the Apollo 13 lunar module, which had been a lifeboat, came back to Earth and they threw it away. It landed way at the bottom of the ocean. They pulled it up. It was fine. And the yacht, they used it again. So, you know, it depends which usually what side you're on in terms of the nuclear argument. It's probably the launching from Earth where the most people get the most upset. The Outer Space Treaty, which China has signed, prohibits nuclear weapons in space, but it doesn't explicitly ban nuclear power sources. Now, China wants to become a major space power. It's aiming to land astronauts on the moon by 2030. It's planned a mission in 2028 to lay the groundwork for a nuclear base on the South Pole. Eventually, it says 50 countries will be invited to work in that base. Now, compare that with the US-led Artemis program, which is aiming to have its astronauts on the moon by around 2027. Now, Chinese officials this week also accused the U.S. of interfering in it in uh, Beijing's attempts to cooperate with other nations on space projects. So all this, Holly, suggests there is certainly a fiercely competitive modern space race as two major powers battle in an area seen as the pinnacle of technological endeavour, Holly. Interesting stuff, Brent. Thank you.